Now here's a question. Why are the media obsessed with stirring up division over anything? Should we ban parents from cheering on their children? Is it right to remove church pews to help the obese? Is it really time to stop saying mums and dads? There is no place for headbands on babies. SpongeBob is talking a lot about global warming and he's only looking at it from one point of view. Is it selfish to use paddling pools? They're trying to bring race into Ernie and Bert. We're blighted by trans fish. The global tyranny of the metric system. Who knew that algebra was racist? Can the Black Panther be played by a white guy? How do I get pregnant? You go fuck yourself? <laughs> the papers. The papers are just as guilty. Barely a day goes by without a headline like this. French food is an expression of white privilege. Snowflakes think full stops are aggressive and unfriendly. <laughs> Mr. Potato Head goes gender neutral. <laughs> It's relentless. According to the Telegraph, even the word trigger is just too triggering for university students. <laughs> Apparently, they just show this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just the media whipping us into a frenzy. Politicians, you may have noticed, are fixating on this word. It's the Guardian reading. To tofu eating. Woke karate. This is about being woke. The lefty woke culture. The capsule of woke. The woke agenda. Woke Twitter mob. The woke left. Woke stuff. The woke for the woke. Being woke. Woke! <laughs> Forget about our mistakes. The woke brigade want to cut Postman Pat's cock off. <laughs> it's such nonsense. They're trying to create a culture war when most people don't give a shit. <laughs> Look how few people on the internet are doing this. 12% of voters accounted for 50% of all social media users. It isn't a war, it's a kerfuffle. <laughs> There's five arseholes on the right and five arseholes on the left, and we're in the middle dealing with their shit like a festival toilet. <laughs> most people don't care about the privilege of beef bourguignon, and yet the papers print this nonsense. Christ, at least in the old days, at least the bullshit was fun. Like this superb daily sport headline. I use Marks and Spencer's Vine Tomatoes as anal beads. Now I'm <laughs> shitting ketchup. <laughs> but now, the news is just clickbait. I mean, take this story from the sun. Race row over Gavin and Stacey, as some viewers demand it's removed. The race row was actually based on one tweet from an anonymous account that said, Chinese Allen, get that shit banned, get it nuked out of orbit. <laughs> that was it. One tweet from an account with no followers. It's almost like it was a Russian bot trying to spark a fight. <laughs> but then what happens, my friends? Outrage. You get tweet after tweet after tweet after tweet. All that fuss about something that wasn't even real. Who do they think they are? Religion? <laughs> and here's another story that made national news that nobody questioned. Curry branded racist, which was based on one Instagram post. If that's all the proof we need, then after Soccer Aid, Gareth Southgate should take Howard to the World Cup. <laughs> Thank you, Mum. <laughs> I've noticed it. I've noticed it. It's such a toxic cycle. Here is how it works. Social media make money by selling your data to advertisers. Ooh. And more data means more money. So they want to keep you scrolling until your thumbs fall off. Ah. And what keeps us engaged? The rage. Facebook's own research found more negative comments on a Facebook post meant more clicks. This is a journalist being bollocked because their last story didn't get enough clicks. <laughs> the boss patiently explains that without clicks, the paper will go out of business. So the journalist becomes less interested in the truth and instead becomes a rage farmer, turning social media posts into news stories for clicks. They see a divisive tweet with two likes saying Jaffa Cakes are transphobic and write a story claiming woke snowflakes wanna ban Jaffa Cakes. <laughs> the article gets shared by the 12% of people who live for this shit. People on the right blame the left. People on the left blame the right. 
everyone starts screaming at each other online. The article goes viral, the newspaper keeps going, the journalist gets praised, and there's only one winner. Then, 24-hour news gets involved. They bring on someone who pretends to love Jaffa Cakes for money and someone who pretends to hate Jaffa Cakes for money and have a reasonable debate. The left post a clip online saying Jaffa Cake lover humiliated on the news. The right post a clip saying Woke Lunatic gets destroyed over Jaffa Cakes. Everyone gets angry, nothing gets resolved. Then two days later, we've forgotten all about it because we're all arguing about a news story. Does the national anthem make you want to eat babies? <laughs> it's all a bunch of manipulated bullshit. The papers do it. We can't let the media warp us into this fake fury. And I know it's pretty ironic that I'm getting outraged about how papers sell outrage to keep us outraged, but it's pretty fucking outrageous. <laughs> this is major papers we're talking about. I mean, listen to the founder of Wikipedia talking about the Daily Mail. I think what they've done brilliantly is, in this ad-funded world, they've mastered the art of clickbait, they've mastered the art of hyped up headlines. They've also mastered the art, I'm sad to say, of running stories that simply aren't true. And that's why Wikipedia decided not to accept them as a source anymore. Think about that. Wikipedia says the Daily Mail can't be trusted. <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> the same Wikipedia who published that David Beckham was a Chinese goalkeeper in the 18th century. <laughs> Robbie Williams eats domestic pets in pubs for money. <laughs> And Benedict Cumberbatch is an actor who is half human, half otter. <laughs> he is, of course, a meerkat. What I'm trying <laughs> to say, don't get sucked into all this. Most people don't care about aggressive full stops or Mr. Potato Head's clit or what... <laughs> or what... <laughs> or what Curry, Gavin and Stacey. They'll happily call anyone by the pronoun they want because they don't want their pronoun to be prick. There is no culture war. It's ten fucking people and a dying media trying to make money by keeping us divided. That is all it is.